EDLD 5303, or what I like to refer to as the ePortfolio course, is uh, the second course in the Digital Learning and Leading program. And uh, whether you're in the DLL program or in the EdTech program, um, this course presents you an opportunity to take ownership of your ePortfolio, find the right platform, experiment with all your ideas, uh, find your voice, voice, develop your voice, and really explore how to use and leverage an ePortfolio to make a difference in terms of how you organize and share and work with all your ideas and information. The key is that they're your ideas. I just want to point you to the syllabus. I, I, I normally don't go through the syllabus, but I want to point you to the outcomes in the syllabus. And this is really important. If you take a look at the learning or outcomes in this course, they're really focused on you identifying and um, identifying and implementing the most effective ePortfolio practices, right? Uh, they focus on um, how the ePortfolio should be used for reflective practice. The other outcome is that, you know, you'll be able to identify and apply um, who owns the ePortfolio and how that ownership contributes to your effective learning. Um, another aspect is that learners will explore and incorporate social and collaborative role of learning in community. This is part of what you're going to be doing with your discussion groups and also within your communities uh, that you're going to be Exploring. And you're also going to be looking at a wide assortment of resources um, and evaluating and compiling these web-based resources um, and identifying experts and communities that will help you to promote your learning. The ePortfolio is yours. One of the most important aspects that you're going to learn in this course and in the DLL program is that once you take ownership of your learning, and ePortfolio is a wonderful place where you can actually find your voice as you take ownership of this learning. Once you take this ownership and you view the assignments within your courses as not simply you identifying, satisfying requirements, submitting materials through your portfolio to your instructor, but the ePortfolio is a place where you organize and share your ideas in terms of your innovation proposal in a future course. The ePortfolio is your place in this course where you pull together a wide assortment of ideas that you've just started to work with and you repurpose them in a way that shows um, your audience, your colleagues, your students, your community that, uh, and your spheres of influence, what you're able to do uh, in terms of learning. So once you really take hold of the fact that the ePortfolio is yours, it makes all the difference in the world. Now, I want to shift over to the actual course itself and talk about some key things that, that I hope that you will uh, take a look at. Um, in the first week, it's really important that you spend a little bit of time and you do take a look at the uh, notion of what, how to succeed in the DLL. Um, in that section, I point you to a wide assortment of COVA resources that are on my ePortfolio my website and we point you to COVA and CSLE resources uh, we point you to the digital uh, the DLL program mapping page that shows you where this program fits in the DLL program which is also useful for the EdTech students as well uh, because there's some key ideas that you'll find that will be beneficial um, we point you to a lot of different ideas that you can actually explore from a video perspective and you also we encourage you to continue reading the COVA ebook which you were introduced to in 5302 um, and this is really important. Reading in grad school is one of the key factors that will contribute to your success. We're going to ask you to read a lot, a lot of different resources, a lot of different articles, multiple books in the other courses moving forward, but reading is the foundation to your academic success in the DLL program. So the COVA ebook has been purposely written in a way and shared with you in an ebook format that doesn't cost you anything, but it's short, it's less than 100 pages, well, it's 100 pages with the references, but it's very, very short, short chapters. We've got wonderful anecdotes, stories, and then we talk about key ideas. The ebook is designed, the COVA ebook is designed to really give you a foundation for what you need to be able to do and understand uh, when you take a look at the notion of giving your learners choice, ownership, and voice through authentic learning opportunities. Well, guess what? We're giving you choice, ownership, and voice through an authentic learning opportunity, which is this ePortfolio.
The ePortfolio is the first of many authentic learning opportunities that you're going to embrace. You, you did a few, your learning manifesto in 5302. You built a growth mindset plan, which is for you, actually it's for your students, so uh, or for the people that you are, are working in your uh, learning environment. So these are tools, these are ideas, these are your resources. These are your resources that you're going to be used when you create significant learning environments. So keep those things in mind. So the, how to succeed in DLL? Don't forget to download, start reading that ebook if you haven't already done. Um, it's going to be make, making a significant difference. Obviously, we point to a variety of resources on my website, also known as my ePortfolio, and take advantage of those. One quick tip, if you run across any broken links, which some people have already pointed out, let me know. Let me know what page the broken link is on, because I'm pointing you to a lot of different pages. Um, and then I can fix that, uh, either fix link or find a better resource. Keep that in mind. Don't forget about the discussions. The discussions are your space to come together and work together with a, a few colleagues in the class to really help each other out. It's your opportunity to share your ideas, to help uh, each other with the editing of your, you know, the ideas that you're writing about. So don't forget to spend a bit of time to come together and to identify two or three or four other individuals that you want to work with. Um, and work with these people in this course and create a foundation of collaboration that you can carry on through the other courses in the program. And for those in the EdTech program, well, guess what? Um, working in a collaborative way will also help you in that program as well. So don't don't forget about that. Um, you, you don't, you can share who you're working with with me, but the key is that you are adults. You are responsible for this. This is a tip uh, and a recommendation to help you be successful. And I'm just encouraging you to do that. So go down that path. It's, it's going to be uh, really important. Now, uh, one of the things that I, I want to encourage you to do is um, I'm going to be posting this page um, or this video on a uh, Perspectives, 5303 Perspectives page where I'm going to point to some ideas. Um, on some of the links that I point you to, there's a, there's a, a Connecting the Dots video. I'll have a link to that video. I want you to think about how you want to move from collecting the dots to connecting the dots. And learning is really all about the connecting of meaningful ideas, right? Making those meaningful connections, right? So this notion of collecting the dots versus connecting the dots is something that I want to introduce you to. And I'll be pointing you to some resources on the perspectives page that will help you with these ideas. You'll want to explore the notion of making meaningful connections. And this is also about this uh, idea of choice and ownership and voice. As you start to make those meaningful connections, as you write about those ideas, as you reflect on those ideas, those connections are going to help you to really take ownership of the learning and make all the difference uh, in the world. So don't forget about that. Now, the ePortfolio. What is it? What are you doing here? Over the next five weeks, you're going to be pulling together weekly posts, your experiences of exploration of different tools, different resources, your experiences in um, revising, updating, and working with your growth uh, mindset, you know, your experiences in your learning communities, you know, working with your learning manifesto ideas. And then looking at all the readings throughout this course, we're asking you to read ahead to take a look at some innovation proposal ideas. Uh, to take a look at some things that you're going to be exposed to in other uh, courses in the program. And again, for the ed tech people, you know, you may not necessarily work through 5305, the innovation program, but you were, you are going to be innovation leaders. So building out innovation projects isn't going to hurt you. And it, it's actually going to be very useful for you to explore those same resources as well. So at minimum, you want to do all these things. In addition to doing these things, you're posting weekly posts. I shouldn't say in addition. It's one of the first things we point to here. You want to have a minimum of at least one post a week. Ideally, you might want to have more. Now, what format can those posts take? Well, they should be a blog post of some sort. I've had an email from a student saying, well, can I do a video? Well, why not? Sure, do video. But if you're talking about certain information like I am here, I'm going to be pointing you to other resources. Well, then maybe within that, uh, you post a video on your site, but then have you know a short description or links to other resources to support what you're doing. You know, Quite often in uh, with YouTube videos or other video presentation, you've got 
you know, uh, description notes or other resources that you can point to that will reinforce the idea. So, you know, while a video is wonderful, don't forget about the fact that there's a lot of resources you want to point to. Here's, here's a key thing that I want you to understand. If you do the minimum, well, it's, you're going to get an average or a minimum grade, right? And a minimal effort will give you a minimal result. We want you to explore. We want you to uh, really dig into this time. Now, one of the things that a lot of students who have graduated from the program or who are further ahead in the program have lamented about is the fact that they didn't take advantage of the time that they had over this five weeks to explore different platforms, to explore WordPress, to explore different tools, to really explore the best way to build their ePortfolios. Um, I'm a huge advocate of WordPress. I encourage you to go down that path. I've been using it for many, many years. It's the most widely used blogging platform. Yes, it might take a little bit more work to get used to it, but it is the most robust, most powerful, most flexible and adaptable program. And especially if you move into that self-hosted platform with WordPress, then it gives you the sky's the limit in terms of what you can do because it is just a, uh, um, a, 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 a thoroughly powerful program. So you want to explore. A lot of students who have recently graduated or are almost graduating have lamented the fact that they didn't take advantage of this time to explore the portfolio and as they started to move down the road and as they start to share ideas with their students or with their colleagues or other faculty or other you know their management or their their sphere of influence as they start to really use the portfolio as a platform for sharing they're finding out hmm you know, Weebly was limited in this way. Wix is limited in that way. Blogger is limited in this way. Maybe I should have gone to WordPress. And, and many people find, or some people have found, that they are making the transition to WordPress at a later date when they wish they would have done it sooner. So I'm encouraging you to explore that the sooner the better. Okay, so I know that I'm going on a little bit long. I'm, I'm hitting the 11 minute mark here, but I'm going to just wrap up as soon as I can um, and talk about uh, one more th or a couple more things and then um, wrap this up because I don't want to overwhelm you. So at a minimum, you want to do all these things. You want to be exploring. You want to be reading um, and you want to really um, move away from the fact that these are assignments to these are opportunities for you to explore, to find the right platform for your voice, to really start to find your voice in terms of you know the influence and the impact that you want to have with your students. And you have an opportunity over the next few weeks to do this. Remember, don't just do the minimum. We're talking about your future, you know, your opportunity, and you know, the more effort and the more time you take and, and the greater the effort you put into making those meaningful connections over the next five weeks, and in particular this week in terms of exploring, the greater opportunity you're going to have to make a, a wonderful sphere of influence in your, or make a difference in your sphere of influence um, as, as you move uh, down the road through this program and um, after the program, after you graduate. So don't just do the minimum. Take ownership, explore, have some fun with this. And, and the sooner you really recognize that this is your ePortfolio and that you are working towards your future and you're working towards changing your world. Remember, the goal is to change the world one learner at a time. As soon as you, the sooner you embrace that, the sooner things fall into, play, into place. So I'm, I'm looking forward to working with you as you go forward in the program. And hopefully this, this tips video, uh, it's a little bit long. Uh, the next ones will be a little bit shorter. Um, but I, I want to make sure that I, I'm providing you as many ideas and resources as I can to help you be successful. Thank you.